Hi, my friends. I'm Devora Sasha, Director of International Solidarity for Human Rights. Today, uh, we are going to interview a beautiful, beautiful, intelligent and young lady. Her name is Catalina Perez de Armiñan. How are you doing, Catalina? I'm honored to be here. <laughs> Catalina, where are you from? I am from Peru, but my father's from Spain, so I'm from both. What are you going to study? Journalism. So I'm really excited. Are you actually heading to the college, to Emerson College? With all the precautions, I cannot stay behind. Um, okay. She has just graduated from Honors College, Miami Day College, journalistic major. She's a journalist, life coach, model, TV host, influencer, YouTuber. She has more than 18,000 followers on Instagram. Catalina, how old are you? I'm 21. 21! Oh my yeah. god. Well, the first uh, question I want to ask you is how this pandemic has affected you. I think it's affected all of us. Um, it's affected us in good ways and in bad ways. I've learned mostly that there's things that you can't control and you can't control what happens to you. You can only control how you react to what happens to you. And that's very powerful because you can either crumble down and cry or stand up again and keep going. And that's what happens many times in life. It's gonna repeat itself, it's a cycle. So it's very important to just keep going because you don't wanna just stay behind, stay in the same place, stay in the darkness. You want to keep moving. I've been doing a lot of things. So, so I've been doing in my, in my Instagram, it's kind of oriented to motivation. So I've been trying to help people stay motivated around the, around the world. And I get many requests. So first I started doing daily workouts that people actually logged into and worked out with me. And I stopped because of a medical reason, but I'll be resuming them soon because people just ask me for them and they want to keep going and they want me to keep doing them. So those are coming back. Um, I'm doing Motivation Mondays, which is being together for 15 minutes to an hour every Monday at 10 p.m. and just talking um, and doing things together, things to stay motivated, meditation, drawing, just talking. Um, I added also daily checkups. So moments where are not scheduled at all and I just go live and I check up on people because that's very important. Um, I've also been working at an organization teaching English online. Um, I'm trying to start a business, <laughs> so I'm working on that. And I recently um, another job and overall just personal growth and preparing for my move to Boston as well. You have been very, very busy. So you have kept working and creating and innovating. So what this pandemic has taught you in a personal level? How has it been for you to go through this special and hard times this pandemic has not been easy for me i can just tell you that. i don't need to go into specifics but it's been one of the most difficult times in my life because i've lost people to covid 19. i've had people well not to covid 19 but because of the difficulties of covid 19. um and i've also had people in my family who have been sick my best friend was sick her mom was sick just a lot of things so overall it's been one of the most difficult times in my life. Um, yet, I'm still here. And because I'm still here, I choose to be here and to make the best of it. Because I'm here, nothing's going to change. So what can I change? My inner self and how I react to it. So that's mm -hmm. what I've learned, to control myself, to be patient, and to just take it as it is. And uh, what about the individual responsibility? You cannot put other people in danger. Your right stops when the other person begins. Exactly. And, and, and you cannot, I see people and I advocate on it on social media. I've been saying to stay home since before lockdown, since this whole thing started. In other continents, I was already saying stay home. I've been pressing elevator buttons with my elbow for more than five months now. Um, but it's true. It's only one year. If you look at your entire life, Exactly. You already live, not even counting what you have to live. You already lived so many years. I already lived 21 years. I can sacrifice one year to end this faster. You're so right, Catalina. 
would like to ask you, do you envision a better world, a different world in the future, more compassionate and more humane? I cannot say what's going to happen because there's, there's unfortunately sometimes malice is, is, takes over and it's overwhelming. So people that are acting with goodwill feel overwhelmed and they feel like they're not causing any change. But I do think the amount of people who are trying to do better is growing. I do think that people are now looking at the big picture and looking at, at their life and what matters to them so that when they go out into the world again, they can advocate for what matters to them. If I'm a person that is interested in helping people who are being trafficked, maybe I'm thinking right now, oh my goodness, I'm in my house. And then what about all these people who are being taken and from their homes and, and are being trafficked around the world right now? Or maybe I'm passionate about global um, to protect the planet. And, and I'm thinking, oh, wow, this is actually really good for the planet. Look at all the benefits. So I think it's a really good time to reflect. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are reflecting and especially the young generation, especially my generation, because we're not, we're not kids, but we're not being directly affected by this either. So we have, we're seeing it and we're realizing that I need to be responsible and I need to convince the kids that are younger than me to be responsible to protect the people that are older than me. So it's that sense of responsibility because I'm in the middle that I have to go and act. And I think I'm 100% sure that I'm not the only person my age who feels this way. And now, if you were the president of a country, any country, or a company, what would be your message for them, for the public? Um, okay, so I'm going to talk not about a specific country. I'm gonna no, talk no, 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 no. Worldwide. In general. You are a president. <laughs> of it. You are going to be. <laughs> Compassion and empathy are very important right now. Um, you need to be compassionate and understand that the person next to you might be going through things that you don't even know because sometimes people are ashamed to tell what's going in their lives. And I've been in that situation where I just don't want to share the bad things that are happening and you have a right to do that. But the person next to you should be able to understand. So compassion is very important. Empathy is very important. Patience because you just have to wait. This is something that you have to wait it out. Stay inside. If you, this is something that has a solution for you. You stay inside, you wait, and you stay safe. There's no risk in staying inside. All you need is patience. Mm -hmm. And that's something that young people do not have. Why? Because we've been trained to go super fast. Oh, you said the word trained. Yeah, accomplish everything. Mm -hmm. super fast we have goals we want to keep going and going and going and this halt in our lives is not something that we're used to and we feel time running out because that's how we've been trained but we need to adjust and we need to reinvent ourselves too there's people now writing books there's people starting their companies um there's people getting new jobs take advantage of it and also the energy that you put out there comes back so if you're only putting out negative energy you're, all, you're only going to get back negative results. So I believe in energy. I think energy is super important. And if you are being positive with your goals, if you're t saying positive talk, positive affirmations, I'm going to do this. I'm going to accomplish this. I'm going to find a job. You will. You attract that mentally. Mm -hmm. Kata, now that you are going to another college, to Boston, far away from Miami, and... Uh, what are you going to miss the most from Miami-Dade College, or beloved college? Miss the community, the community it has. I've never mm -hmm. felt, I've never been in a place where I feel as wrapped up, but also at the same time being pushed to, to find opportunities and to look for opportunities and be able to find them. So Miami-Dade College, it's amazing because it's a place where you have the support from other people, from people around you. And that support is what gives you the strength to jump to new opportunities. But then you also find them. But I love that at MDC, in the Honors College, but also MDC in general, you have that community and you're all in it together. So that's a sense of community that I'm never going to forget. And I had the best two years of my life at, in the Honors College at NBC, and I couldn't have asked for a better college experience.
Now that we are getting to the end of the interview, I want to ask you four questions. What's your passion? I, I can tell you my mission to help other people be happy, to bring justice to the ones that need it, that deserve it, to bring a voice to those who are, have been silenced or who cannot share what they want, and to make a better world, even if it's just a little bit. What's your favorite color? I actually don't have a favorite color. I feel bad for all the rest, but I will go with white. What's your favorite book? Pride and Prejudice. Oh, okay. And your favorite person? Mm, that's a hard one. Um, I would say, can it be a person who's not um, here <laughs> right now? <laughs> um, I would say my favorite person to me is God. I, I have a very strong faith. Um, my mom, my, my, my immediate family, but above everything, God. That's what drives me really, my faith. And a lot of times I don't share that because I've chosen not to be very open about that on, on social media. Um, but it's, it's, some, it's what drives me. Tada, thank you very much for this interview. It was my privilege to have uh, this conversation with such an amazing girl. I wish you all the best in Boston, at Emerson College, and I wish uh, you all the success in the world. And your final message, please. Um, so my final message will be to just take it day by day, be patient, reinvent yourself, practice empathy, search for something that is meaningful to you, something that you want to change in the world once you're out of this. How are you going to change it? Think about your mission, why you're here, what your purpose is, and just do a lot of self-analysis. Take it as it goes. Don't feel bad if you have a bad day. It's completely normal. You don't have to be happy all the time. I'm not happy all the time. It's impossible. But we're working on it, and it's a step-by-step and we all have, we can all have a bad day. We can all keep moving forward at our own pace. So just keep moving forward is my overall message. And do it with a positive attitude because that's going to help you. Thank you, Katarina.